What's up, guys? This is Mike Hernishan from Blue Chip Scouting, joined in his car by Tyler Fortis of NBC Sports Edge. Tyler, how are you today? I'm wonderful. I now have a marriage license again. So yes, sir. I, I can prove that I've been married for a year and a half. Um, but otherwise, <laughs> I'm I'm doing okay. I'm just uh, get, going back to work, but I'm excited to be doing this mock with you because the Chiefs are a fascinating team to draft for because while they have a lot of needs, most of them are masked by star players. Yeah, uh, I think it's safe to say the Chiefs are pretty good. Just a little bit. Just a bit. So we're being uh, we're, we're recording this. We've got uh, the PFN mock draft simulator open. It is all seven rounds. It's set to fast because uh, Fordo is on his way to work. We wanted to make sure we got two people on this video. So Fordo, you ready to go? I am 100% ready. As All you right. can hear my blinker in the background. <laughs> so we are on the board at number 30. We just got an offer from, uh, from wow, the Packers want to offer us pick 59, 92, and then two picks next year for pick 30 and 103. They picked uh, Sam Howell at 28. Yeah, I'm good. I, I think we should hold Pat here. The, the Chiefs have the kind of a narrowish window to really maximize their assets because they do have Patrick Mahomes on that really wonky deal where they can push money if they want. Mm -hmm. I think your sound cut out just a, a, a bit. It's a very interesting conundrum. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and reject this deal now. Uh, I'm rejecting all deals. Um, okay, Forno, Jermaine Johnson is still available at 30. Mike, I can't hear you. Son of a bitch. Not at all. Oh. I'm going to I'm going to jump back in, okay? Okay. There we go. There you go. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. My wife called and it screwed up the audio. Oh, Bluetooth? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that happens. Okay. All right, so who's what, on the board? Uh, top players available. Jermaine Johnson, Kenyon Green, Traylon Burks, Lewis Seen. Oh, this is, that's a tough one because they could honestly use three of those four players, fill immediate needs uh, with a high-end talent. I think uh, when you talk about the Chiefs, you want to maximize offense. Offense, most importantly. I think Jermaine Johnson is probably the best player on the board. But to, for what the Chiefs love to do, I think you need to go with Burks. He's a guy that can really win over the middle, uh, yards after catch. And when they really can play a successful shell coverage, Burks is the kind of guy that can really disrupt it and force them to kind of change their coverages. And then that will allow Hill and Kelsey to really be able to dominate and attack um, the uh, zone openings. But if you want to go Jermaine Johnson, I get that too. Like his get off 1.55 seconds is just absolutely elite. He can win with his hands. He went with power. He can win around the edge. He can do everything. It wouldn't shock me if he goes top five. It also wouldn't surprise me if because of the depth of the size class and how people teams might prefer players differently if he falls. I'm going to go with Jermaine Johnson because if I remember correctly, and you would know this a lot better than I would, isn't Frank Clark a free agent? Uh, they just restructured his deal to a two-year contract so it's not as pressing of a need as it might have been because Johnson is or sorry Clark is returning to the Chiefs on a relatively team-friendly hit they do need a wide receiver too though so I'm, I'm in agreement with you I'm gonna go with, with Traylon Burks can we just laugh at the fact that uh despite desperately needing a uh, a wide receiver the Packers passed up on Traylon Burks to draft Sam Howell and I've lost Fordo again. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Hello again, sir. Ah, uh, my wife called again. It, uh, it's I'll, I'm hoping she doesn't call a third time because that's just going to be annoying. Um, all right, what are we at for the second round? All right. 
we are at pick six, uh, 62, go away, Indy. I'm not interested in, in trading. Sam Williams, uh, which would definitely fit with their off-field issues uh, need that they always seem to want to fill. Arnold Abiketti, Carson Strong, George Pickens, Jalen Watermeyer, MyJ Sanders, and John Mechie are the best available. So uh, this is where Traylon Burks would have really come in handy at uh, 30 because look at what's on the board. It, it's a bevy a bevy of pass rushers that I think are better personally than what George Pickens is at receiver in comparison. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think Pickens is the pick here. He's a guy who can be a little bit of a field stretcher. He's not Oh, be I, dude, I picked Burks at 30. You what? I picked, I picked Burks at 30. Oh, you did? Yes. Okay. You got, okay. You got, yeah. You cut out again. <laughs> well, you said you were picking Jermaine Johnson. No, no, no. I said Traylon Burks cause they needed a wide receiver too. All right, well, then we're going pass rusher here. Um, <laughs> Evan Caddy is probably the best option, all things considered, because Sam Williams has those off-field concerns, and Evan Caddy is just an athletic maven. He really showed that at the Combine and in at his pro day. I think that should be the pick here. You could argue Sam Williams if you're comfortable with the off-field. I don't know enough about it in order to really make quantify it and make a decision, so I'm avoiding it and going Evan Caddy. I think Evan Caddy's a better player and has no off-field, so... I'm going to go with Epicati on that one. Boom, there we go. What I was saying to you before you cut out the last time was, could we just laugh at the fact that the Packers desperately needed a number two wide receiver and instead chose Sam Howell in the first round? Ah, makes my heart whole. (laughs) So at pick 94, um, (laughs) we still have really good players available here. We've got okay. Kingsley Inagbari, Greg Dulcich, Quay Walker, Alec Lindstrom. That's a little too rich for my blood. Tyler Algier, Jerome Ford, Caleb Ellaby, and Calvin Austin as the top 100 players available according to PFN. I don't care what we did earlier in the draft. It's Calvin Austin. There's I agree. No chance in hell he should be here. Calvin Austin, in my opinion, is a top 40 player. He should be a top 40 pick, potentially a first rounder. The what he showed at the Senior Bowl. Because at Memphis, he was all manufactured touches, jet sweeps, crossers, screens. And then he ran a little bit of the deep stuff. But what he showed was a real acumen to be a true receiver with his release package, the ability to utilize his frame uh, in routes and catching the football. He has a very large catch radius for somebody of his stature. They like I, I don't care. You'll find a way to use him in that creative system. Now, we are back at 103. And, uh, well, not, not a whole lot has changed, except I would argue that at 103, Damone Clark from LSU makes a lot of sense here. To pair Incredibly him. Incredibly smart football player, and he's got athleticism. When you compare those two things, especially in a Steve Spagnuolo defense that's going to be incredibly aggressive, I think that is a fantastic route to take. Because uh, everything else that's here, Matt uh, will let's go. Kate Otten, Jalen Armour Davis. I'm not really familiar. Quay Walker. I'm not really familiar with those guys. I did just wrap up Clark's uh, scouting report. Uh, Armour Davis is an interesting option here. Uh, he's got a very, very nice athletic profile. And he had really nice flashes of being a potential cornerback one in the NFL. Problem is to make consistency. Had some lingering injury issues. But... At this point in the draft, that's a very interesting option. I would argue Damon Clark, because I think if you paired him with with Bolton, you have a very, very good linebacker tandem for years to come. I'm I'm not against that. All right. We're going to go with Damon Clark, and I don't know when. I think we're up again in – we're at 135 now. And the best players – ooh, we, we have a Dante Colinelli brand guy available. Actually, we have two. Sense. No, no, no. We've actually got two of them because we have Nick Cross from Maryland and we've got Cole Strange from Chattanooga. You know, as much as I love the idea of them taking a guard here. <laughs> well, well, hold on. <laughs> Kyle Long is a question mark long term. Mm-hmm. You're cutting out Solid really tier. bad. Oh, am I? Oh, boy. Yeah, now you're good. Now you're good. Okay. So, I think Cole Strange. Um, Kyle Long's a question mark. You have a very cheap interior, which the guards don't matter philosophy. Second round picks and later with talent, inexpensive contracts. Boom. 
Like you, a, a fourth this and a easy. sixth, and you're gonna and you're gonna get a high quality play. This is a big win for the Chiefs. Big win. And you pair him with Creed Humphrey, who is the best offensive lineman from this past year. Uh, he was also the 12th best player in the draft class last year, pre-draft. Yeah, he he, he was around that for me as well. Now we have a long way. I, we're back on the clock now at two uh, pick two thirty three. All right. Now, best players available. It is a absolute crapshoot right now. We've got James Mitchell, the tight end from uh, Virginia Tech, and also father of Abyss, uh, Julius Turner, Jack Cohn, <laughs> uh, a USC linebacker whose name I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce. Logan Bruss, the uh, offensive tackle from Wisconsin, and Zach Vol- Van Valkenburg out of Iowa. All right, so when I look at this, I think you take James Mitchell. If he plays a full season with Virginia Tech, even though that they had a myriad of issues on offense, a lot of oh, that yeah. had to do with injuries. James Mitchell tore his ACL in week two, really crushed my shot at a fantasy football title uh, because I placed a lot of emphasis on Mitchell in an ACC and MAC draft. Uh, Ooh. Yeah, um, uh, what was it? Um, Kobe Lewis, the running back from Central Michigan, was my third-round pick, torn ACL off for the year preseason. James Mitchell, fourth-round pick, torn ACL for the year. So it really, really crushed my, any of my hopes. But I'll say this. When he when he's on, very, very talented player, can really be a seam stretcher, more of an inline type guy, but you can ask him to do a, a little bit of everything if you need. Um, I think he could be a nice understudy to Kelsey without having to actually play major minutes early on. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with you on this one. I mean, you're you're looking at someone that's gonna be a backup for uh, for Kelsey for a couple of years, and at very least, just get 15 to 20 catches a year. I think James Mitchell can get you that easy. Andy, I think he'd be a, a potential second, third, fourth round player if he would have had a full season to play and was not coming off of a torn ACL. Exactly. Pick 243, top players are Jack Cohn, that USC linebacker, Ty Chandler, Jermaine Waller, Jeremiah Gamel, and Thomas Booker. Thomas Booker's an interesting one because he's really kind of a tweener. Uh, Best is like a five technique to three technique, can play inside and out. Um, But when I look at this, Jack Cohn is intriguing because he can uh, can be a long-term backup without having any. That's the first time anyone's ever said that about Jack Cohn. Look, I'll be honest, um, I really was super low on Jack Cohn. You can read all my articles about Notre Dame for NBC Sports Sets from this past year. But Lance Erline really said something that invoked some interest in me. And quite frankly, when I thought about it, he's right. He really excels at nailing those intermediate level throws. And that, that to me, with his intelligence, screams long-term style backup, which I know Kansas City could utilize long-term. So that, and at a seventh round evaluation, you're not really utilizing any capital. Um, The other interesting element would be Ty Chandler. Chandler had a fantastic year this season for North Carolina, kind of buried on the depth chart at Tennessee for his first couple years, but uh, really blossomed, ran fast at the combine, runs with power. He's a bigger style back. So you're not going to worry about him getting beat up a lot. Like those would be my two choices here. And I'd probably go Chandler because you really want to focus on that offense, and it feels like Chad Henney will play forever as long as it's for Andy Reid. <laughs> I'm going to agree with you on that one. Uh, Chad Henney will be a backup quarterback till he's 56. Yep. We, we're we still not done. We have more picks. We uh, At 251, Thomas Booker is still available, and I think that this makes a lot of sense. Thomas Booker, yeah. yeah. You get a guy who can be versatile. He's not going to be the most athletic or explosive, but he's powerful, physical, and he's a guy that can make an impact in the running game right away while he continues to learn the the nuances of the pass rush. I almost just, for the last pick at 259, want to do this one just because we have my favorite Midwesterner on the screen. Uh, uh, we do have, and he's the 259th ranked player according to Pro Football Focus. He's an offensive guard, so it's on brand from you. From the University of Minnesota, it's Blaze Andrews. Andrews is a good football player. I haven't Very gotten versatile. To him, so. he can he can play all across the line. The nice part about that Minnesota uh, line, there were, you had multiple guys who could play four or five positions, and Andrews is one of those guys that um, they utilized like an offensive line rotation, which is kind of weird. But they had six starters this past year. They had six players that had thirty or more starts under their belt. 
You're not going to see that in a lot of programs. No. Um, you're probably never going to see it again after this COVID stuff. So looking at all that, that's that's a really interesting option. But I think Thomas Booker has got to be the pick here. Because oh, you really I already picked keep... Booker at 251. We're good. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I said for 259. They have they have way too many seventh round picks. 259. All right. Who else is on the board with Andrews? Uh, Jeremiah Gamel, EJ Brown, the, uh, sorry, EJ Perry, the Brown quarterback, DeMarco Jackson from App State, Quay Holmes from, I think that's East Tennessee State, uh, Nasir Greer from Wake Forest, Tanner Connor from Idaho State, Ironhead Hayward's kid, uh, also Cameron Hayward's brother, Chris Steele and Noah Ellis ahead of, uh, Andrews on the board. All right, well, so there, a couple things really stand out to me, Mike. Um, Tanner Connor is a, is Paul, he's big, and he's really, really, really fast. If we didn't already take multiple receivers in this draft, <laughs> I think he'd be the slam dunk pick for me. Um, but there there are a couple other options here that are very fascinating. Um, I think EJ Perry and DeMarco Jackson are, look like really good choices. I'd probably go EJ Perry because that's a really nice developmental piece that can sit behind Mahomes, work with Andy Reid, be a long-term backup, and potentially, if he ends up getting some real playing time with his offense, be a guy you can flip for better capital down the line. I'm all for that. It's a Brown quarterback. And you know what? We don't see a lot of quarterbacks from Brown University nowadays. And he's intriguing. I haven't gotten to him. I'm hoping for something to get me excited about this quarterback class. Uh, the unknown of it all intrigues me. I'm going to go with EJ Perry as our last, um, as our last pick. Well, the fact that you don't like Malik Willis, Mike, just hurts my soul. I don't like any of these quarterbacks. I don't like any of these quarterbacks. Well, yeah. <laughs> so I our mean... our full finalized draft class for the Chiefs is Traylon Burks, Arnold Ebiketti, Calvin Austin III, Demond Clark, Cole Strange, James Mitchell, Ty Chandler, Thomas Booker, EJ Perry. Our friend Russell Jakubowski would call that a dub uh, I think come the draft, none of this is really all that realistic given where we are now, but I'm, yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> Mike, I'm a big fan of this draft. You hit a lot of needs. You got players that can be plug and play, and you have high upside talent. I, I really don't see any any downfall with this. Um, I, re I think we hit a home run with, with this draft for the Chiefs. Yeah. Well, Forno, thank you for joining me for this very quick mock draft. Where can the people find you on Twitter? Absolutely. You can find me on Twitter at The Real Forno. I'll still be around to help uh, Blue Chip Scouting out with some video stuff here moving forward. Um, most of my written work is going to be NBCSportsEdge.com uh, and the VikingsWired.com as well, where I just released a seven round Vikings mock draft focusing on building around Kirk Cousins. And I ended up giving them Chris Olave. Uh, which uh, he might end up being my wide receiver one. I'm just obsessed with his game, and the Justin Jefferson lesson taught me a lot in the 22 class. You can't overlook a guy like Olave. Thank you for bringing up the Justin Jefferson wounds. I really appreciate it. You know what? That was by no means an insult towards <laughs> you. It, I see them as incredibly similar players. They're master technicians. They also have explosiveness and are good in the open field, but it's... You just you have to learn something from previous draft classes, and I hope Howie Roseman learned his. I'd like to think that too, but I've also realized that with Howie Roseman as general manager, I'm probably in for at least one uh, profanity-laced yeah. rant during our, our live draft coverage here on YouTube. Until next time, guys, take it.